Welcome to our series on Sitecore installation. Today, senior developer John David will give us a real-world demo of PowerShell-based Sitecore installation. So, let's do that. Uh, to be able to do that, we need a few things. We need a Sitecore license, important. We need some web deploy packages, which uh, we have baked earlier. And we need some configuration files for the installer and also a teeny tiny bit of PowerShell to ask it to do the installation. So what I'm gonna do first, because the entire process for this particular site course setup takes about seven or eight minutes, so I need some time to waffle on. So we'll start up the installer, and then I will walk you through exactly what's happening. So here is my installation script. It's enormous, it will take ages to scroll through it. There we go. Uh, it's actually a lot longer than it could be because I've done a lot of parameter setup at the top here to avoid having to scroll to the right because scrolling to the right is a real pain. So we've got some uh, parameters that say where our config files are. We've got a prefix that we're going to use for our site name. We've got paths to our web deploy packages that are going to get executed. Uh, and we have three invocations of the install site core configuration command. Uh, and I've cheated a little bit with some PowerShell parameters splatting on the end. But effectively, I've set up an array of parameters that the, uh, each individual install config file is going to expect and then attach them to the end and PowerShell is smart. And it will just turn those into parameters to the, to the install com cycle configuration function. So uh, the first one we have uh, does some solar jazz for us. We'll take a quick peek inside. And what you'll see is, uh, firstly, it is expecting uh, a URL to our solar instance. So I've got the uh, Bitnami one set up locally. So these, are, these sensible defaults are not actually sensible for me, which is why they are overrid at the top here in the solar parameters. Uh, and then further down, we have some variables that we uh, calculate various paths and uh, site names and all sorts of things based on the parameters. Uh, we're not going to go into too much depth with the solar one because it's large and uh, not very exciting. Uh, but effectively, it will set up a whole bunch of solar cores that the Sitecore instance that we're installing is going to rely on. Uh, let's check on our install and see where we're going. Right, we got to the point now where we're installing one of the web deploy packages, which is exciting. It means we're probably about halfway through now, so I'll have to go a little bit quicker. Uh, we have two more configurations uh, that are invoked. They share a whole bunch of common parameters. They share, no, don't do that. They share the same SQL server. They share the same site prefix. They set, share the same license. So, you know, to save myself a little bit of typing, then again, they're all packaged up in an array there and attached to the end of the uh, install site core configuration command. Uh, the only thing we really actually change is the WDP that we are referencing and we also give it a different name, one for content management, one for content delivery. So if we take a peek inside the content management configuration, uh, what we try and do, uh, or what, what our best practice recommends is have as few parameters as you can, do a lot more with variables because uh, nobody likes to type a lot of stuff at the command line. Uh, if you have to have a lot of parameters, please apply sensible defaults. Uh, if you know that your solar installations are going to be Bitnami, then your file path is going to be pretty much the same. Set that as your sensible default. Uh, same with uh, usernames and passwords. You can use parameter references as well, like Kieran explained earlier, so that you, again, can save on your typing, because we only have so many keystrokes in our life. Uh, here we set up some variables. Uh, so we have a fixed SQL database prefix that we are using, which is just SCUG. Uh, uh, and then we tack on the end of the SQL database names that we all know and love. Those are used later, uh, further on, as parameters that we pass into the WDP package. Uh, we also have some certificate things that we calculate. So the content management uh, site I have set up as a secure site, so it needs a certificate. You can only access it via a HTTPS endpoint because security is great. And you don't want people snooping on your uh, editor session when you're changing your title of your content items. 
Uh, so if we move down to the tasks and whiz through those very quickly, uh, the first thing we do is we ensure that we have a path that our site course site is going to live in. Uh, we set up an app pool and a website. All of these are out of the box tasks that we supply with SIF. Uh, we also stop them before we deploy things. We remove the default binding because that just interferes with your ports. If you try and add another port with the same or another site with the same port, then you won't be able to start it. So uh, we also then set up our SSL. Uh, we use uh, our skip task here so that actually if you don't supply an SSL certificate, it will create one for you. If you do supply one, then fine, it doesn't need to run that task. Uh, we also set a whole bunch of permissions on the file system. And then we get to the meaty bit where we ask the WDP to do the installation of Sitecore itself. It takes a lot of parameters, which is where we've set up the uh, a lot of the variables for the database names. So you'll see a big chunk of these ones are actually variables that we've set further up. Because they have a common pattern with their name and conventions, then uh, we just have a prefix parameter and then set up the actual names of the things that we're trying to create as variables and then reference those. So all of those use the uh, config function syntax. So you can see there we're asking for a variable. Uh, there we're asking for a parameter. There we're telling it to concatenate a parameter and a fixed string. So all of these config functions will be very familiar to people with ARM templates because that's where I lifted the idea from because it was a great idea. Uh, and it just makes your life a lot easier. Uh, and then at the very end, we have we restart the websites and we ask Solar to populate the uh, populate the Solar indexes. So hopefully by now, after that amount of waffling, we should be done. And we are. So it's finished. Uh, CM takes about three minutes. CD takes about three minutes. Solar takes about two three minutes. So you have a simple site core setup of separate CM, separate CD, and solar configuration in just under 10 minutes. But you don't believe me, because I haven't showed it to you. There we go, there's our instance. So there's our content management. Uh, we also have a separate CD server. So we'll just give Sitecore maybe 20 seconds to uh, warm itself up, working away. There we go, there's our CD. And to prove that everything still works as Sitecore should, uh, let's load up the content editor, make a change, and publish it using the old publishing mechanism. Okay. I, I, I do know that there is a faster way to publish, available for download now, from all good cycle retailers. So, there we go. There's our separate CM and CD and everything still works as you would expect it to.